Welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. Today we are going to be reviewing the Opus 2400 watt power station. In my opinion, this is the best affordable power station you can get. This channel is all about helping the average person get prepared fast with affordable solutions. So these are the kind of products that I look for and like to review. Just know I am not affiliated with Opus and this power station was bought by me through my own research and money. Okay, so let's get into the Opus 2400 watt. Um, this is about the biggest size that I like for being able to move around the house and also have a large capacity to turn on things like your refrigerator or run a small window air conditioning unit. This is a 2400 watt inverter and the battery watt hours are about 2,232 watt hours of battery capacity. A reason I chose Opus over like a Jackery or an EcoFlow or another brand is Opus actually comes in at a way better price. When you are looking at Jackery or EcoFlow or any of the big name brands, you're typically looking at a dollar per watt hour. So if you buy a 2000 watt Jackery or an EcoFlow or something, you're looking at two grand. This is over 2000 watt hours and it comes in at $1,011 as we stand here today for just the power station, not the panels that come with it. Okay, so when I'm picking a solar generator out, there is four things that I'm always looking for. I'm looking for LifePo 4 batteries. Uh, these are batteries that give you the most recharges. I think it's 3,500 recharges to 80% of its battery capacity. Unlike Jackery or something else, you're getting about 800 recharges to 80% of its capacity if they have the lithium ion battery as opposed to the LifePo 4 batteries. The second thing I'm looking for is a pure sine wave inverter on the AC outlets. This lets me plug radios, laptops, computer equipment in, whatever I want with a circuit board in it and not damaging any sensitive electronics. Another big one is passive charging on all of the outlets. That is your USB, your AC, and all your DC ports. I want to be able to run solar input into this or charge it from the wall while I'm using all of the charge ports. This increases our capacity because we can charge the unit as we are running a refrigerator or something during an emergency and charging the unit at the same time. It's very important to me. Regulated DC outlets. When I plug radio equipment into this, like a DC powered radio into the DC outlet, it is important for it to be regulated because if it's unregulated, as the battery capacity in your solar generator goes down, on an unregulated DC outlet, your voltage drops as well. As with this, it will stay at 13.4 volts the whole way up until 0% battery capacity. Opus is a brand that I looked at that came with all four of these features that I'm looking for, also at a price at about half the price of other name brand solar generators. So you might be wondering how long you can run an appliance on something of this size. Uh, we have a, a pretty big refrigerator that has an ice maker and water and everything in it, just like your typical fridge. Um, it'll pull about anywhere between 50 and 250 watts. And we ran it during the day while we were using it. And we have kids, so they're always opening the doors and running the ice maker and stuff. So it was under heavy use. And it used about 25% of the power in six hours with no solar input. It was just standalone. It wasn't being charged or anything. So that should give you a pretty good idea how long you can run one of the, how long you can run a refrigerator off one of these. And if you were running solar input to, to it during the day, you could pretty much run a fridge indefinitely if you could get enough sunlight. Okay, so we're here at the front of the Opus 2400, and it's got a bunch of AC outlets. Uh, those are good. This, I know people are going to ask about this. This is a trap. This is a transient reducing aux plug. I do not have a Faraday bag for this, so to offer me some protection from EMP, why this thing is being stored, I do keep one of these plugs in. 
it is supposed to aid in protecting your solar generator if there were to be a solar flare or an EMP. Um, the front of this also has, here's your DC outlet that is regulated. Um, a good way to tell if they're regulated is you have to turn them on. So if I turn it on, you'll see it come on on the screen. Um, this indicates that I'm actually turning that DC uh, power outlet on. If you ever have one that doesn't have a power button to turn it on, you know it's just running right off of the battery, and that's not good. That's not the way we want those to be set up. Um, you have all your USB, uh, your 60 watt, um, everything you would ever need um, to charge a phone, a tablet, a laptop, plug anything in, um, AC plug wise. And I really like the digital discrete the digital screen on these um, when you plug this in you'll see everything come up I only have one power pack plugged in right now so you'll see your input wattage spike up should go up to about 160 187 in and it'll show you um, how many hours you can run um, with it unplugged or not right now we're just running a little um, light it's just a light we use to do filming in here and it should go down. It'll run 70 or 80 hours at 9 or 10 watts on that. A lot of that is because we are running it off of AC. So we're running the AC inverter. Um, and that's burning up some power, just running the AC inverter. If I wanted to be more efficient, I could pull this out and plug it into one of these. And we could be a lot more efficient about that by shutting the AC power off. So it's really good to have a lot of these outlets on here for um, just maximizing efficiency. Another really cool feature about this is it does have a light on the back. And I like having a light on the actual solar generator because it's more efficient than plugging a light in and turning inverters on. This light runs right off of the battery of this unit so you get a ton of runtime. And this is a lot of light. It'll illuminate um, a whole room in your house. It's pretty bright. A great consideration to make is when you have one of these is having the solar extension cables. These come in the 7909 or Anderson or whatever you want them to be in. But I like to run my panels outside and have my solar generator inside. So I take these 30 foot solar extension cables and I'll run them through a window or something. That way I can keep my panels outside and connect these right to the solar generator while they're constantly charging outside. These are the two power bricks that charge this. And when both of them are plugged in at the same time, because that's what gives you maximum charging when you plug both of them in, um, it'll run about 360 or 380 watts in. And it takes about six hours to charge this thing from 0%. And these run on the 7909 connectors, also known as the 8 millimeters. And there's two ports on the solar generator to plug these in. I'll show you those in one sec. Okay, so here are the charge ports on this unit. It has two Anderson inputs, and it also has two 7909 connectors, also known as 8 millimeter. Um, the biggest problem with this is, and if we can show this, you cannot charge the Anderson connectors at the same time as you use these. And the Opus solar panels come with these connectors, the 7909 or 8 millimeter. So I can plug in two at a time, or I can use an adapter, which we're going to put on the screen here, and you can plug up to four 240 watt solar panels into this thing at once to give you almost a thousand watts of incoming charging. If you're anything like me, you already have some solar panels laying around. And I have some with the Anderson connector on it. So the big problem with not being able to use both charge ports at once is I can't plug this Rock Pals solar panel in at the same time I use the Opus ones because the connectors are different. So what I have to do is run an extension. So what I'll do so I can use two of the panels at once if you're going to mix and match solar panels is I will actually run um, 
this which adapts it out to an eight millimeter and that way i can plug in this 100 watt rock pal solar panel at the same time as i can run my actual opus solar panel that came with it it just gives me a little bit more capability so it's kind of a downside to this particular solar generator that i cannot use all of the outlets the input outlets at once this is the car charger that comes with this and it doesn't really give you too much power input i think it's about 120 watts in from your car charger and if you are going camping with this thing or something, if you are charging it from your car, it takes about 23 hours to get this from 0% to full. So just keep that in mind if you're going to buy this for camping. You might want to charge it before you go and maybe just top it off in the car if needed. One thing that I find about the Opus, and this is not a deal breaker for these, but I want to mention it because we're doing the review. The plastic quality on the sides of these, um, some of the side plastic and a little bit of the way the panel gaps come together are not as nice as an actual Jackery product. These are a lot uh, stiffer plastic. It seems like it's higher quality in its actual build quality. But for the price that these come in as, I will put up with a little bit, little bit less durable plastics on a unit for what value proposition the Opus offers. The Opus 2400 watt uh, solar generator is about 45 pounds. Like I said, this is about as big of a unit as I want to carry around the house, move around and whatnot. Once you get up into those four or 5,000 watt units, they are about the size of like a big gas generator and in weight and it's just going to be really difficult to move them this is kind of the goldilocks zone this 2400 watt it just it's just big enough where you could still move it around and offers a lot of capability